Today, Elephants, The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nisrana Farouk, and also how to make this rather cool elephant decoration or even reed diffuser. Hello, on today's video we're looking at elephants. There are two main types, the African elephant and the Indian or Asian elephant. A good way to tell the two types of elephant apart is the African elephant tends to be a bit larger with bigger ears compared to the Indian or Asian elephant. Also, the tip of the trunk of the African elephant has two fingers for grasping, whereas the Indian elephant only has one. Elephants can live up to 70 years. They're mammals that are herbivores and can grow up to 8.2 metres. But as I said before, the Indian elephants tend to be a bit smaller than the African ones. They can weigh about seven tons and have pretty big brains. Their brains weigh five kilograms and with that large size and brain capacity, it's no wonder they remember things for years, not just survival skills, but social learning skills as well. Elephants are the largest land animals. And in their trunks alone have around 150,000 muscle units. Their trunks also come in handy when they go swimming they can use them as snorkels and they're pretty good swimmers as for their tusks they're actually enlarged incisor teeth that start growing at about two years old and then carry on growing throughout their lives and they're really handy for digging up roots and also fighting with sadly it's their tusks that poachers are after and the numbers of elephants in the wild both african and Asian has reduced dramatically in the last century. Elephants have record long pregnancies. They get pregnant for about 22 months. That's almost two years. And once their young are born, they're up and around and walking about within an hour. Elephants are pretty emotional creatures. They mourn their dead and even sometimes cover them with leaves. Um, they've been known to shed tears too. And studies have shown that they can be scared of spiders. Elephants communicate in a number of ways through trumpet calls, body language, touch and scent. But they have a very unique way as well of communicating through sounds that create vibrations in the ground, which they can detect through their bones and can be used to communicate with other elephants that may be miles away. Pretty cool creatures. And our book today is called The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nisrana Farouk. Chapter one. Chaya looked at the bronze spear pointing at her neck. Stop right there, said the guard. Chaya took a step back and held up her hands. The linen pouch under her blouse clinked. The chatter of the clouds floated up from the promenade below, where the king's annual feast was taking place. What are you doing here, girl? The guard waved the spear at her. From below them, the melody of the Venus drifted up. The musical show was starting. Chaya shrugged, the pouch pressing against her chest. She rubbed her palms down her skirt and tried to keep her voice level. I'm just looking around. Her voice brought two more guards at the top of the stone steps cut into the hill. This was how the royal palace was built, a network of buildings at the top of the mountain, every rock and ledge forming courtyards and pools for the royal household while they ruled from above. You're not allowed here, the guard said to Chaya. You should be down below enjoying the food and festivities. Not Chaya. She much preferred breaking into the Queen's rooms and stealing her jewels. There was a particularly nice blue sapphire in her pouch at that moment. Well, the man jabbed his spear towards her. What have you got to say for yourself? I wanted to get a little closer to the palace, see what it's like. It looks so pretty from down there. She pointed in the direction of her village and made her face go all wistful. The guard sighed. Fine, just make sure you don't do it again. He put his spear down. Anything past the lion's entrance is strictly out of bounds to the public. Chaya looked back and nodded meekly, as if noticing the giant lion statue for the first time, even though it could be seen from the villagers miles away. The stone stairway carved between the crouching lion's paws led into a complex of buildings that made up the inner palace. Come on now, the guard gripped her arm, making her wince. 
He pulled her to the cobbled walkway sloping downwards towards the celebrations below. I don't want to see you here again. The Queen's jewels jangled in her pouch. There were sapphires, tourmalines and star rubies set in heavy shiny gold. How many jewels did one person need anyway? All these were just the ones from the drawer in the rosewood table by the bed. Pity she'd had to leave so quickly when she'd heard voices outside the door. And then to be seen when she was halfway down to the promenade was just bad luck. She shrugged herself free of the guard and set off, her arms stinging from where his fingers had pinched her. In spite of everything, Chaya found herself gasping at the view from up there. The kingdom of Serendib spread out around her as far as the eye could see. Thick green forests and strips of silver rivers with the king's city below and clusters of little villages beyond. But she wasn't ready to leave yet. Chaya paused near a tamarind tree and pretended to look up at the monkeys on it. Dappled sunshine prickled her face as she looked at the guard out of the corner of her eye. He had stopped walking but was still watching her. She heard him swear loudly. What are you doing now? Get out, girl, before I come and give you a thrashing. The sensible thing to do was to get out of there as fast as she could. But the Queen's rooms were calling out to her as if she could hear their whisper right there in the warm sun, the softness of the velvet rugs, the gauzy bed curtains, dancing in the breeze and the promise of more riches within the ebony and tea cabinets. Suddenly a commotion came from above her near the Queen's quarters. She heard shouting and the sound of people running. Chaya thought back quickly. Had she forgotten to close the drawer in her rush? She sneaked a quick look over her shoulder to see a figure running down the cobbled pathway behind her. It was really time to get out. Chaya carried on walking as casually as she could, her heart hammered at the sounds behind her. She was just passing under the stone line when she heard a yell. Hey, you! Chaya sped up, her bare feet scorched by the cobbles. Hey, I need to talk to you, girl. She had to get away fast or everything would be over. Her feet slapped harder on the path and her breath came out in puffs. There was a scuffle of hurrying feet behind her. Chaya hitched up her skirt and raced down the path. The sound of thundering feet chased her, heavy sandals pounding on cobbles. She pulled up with a jolt when she saw a row of guards racing towards her from below. She turned and ran blindly sideways, springing up some steps into the Queen's prayer hall and threading through its grass granite columns. Spears clattered against columns as the guards tramped after her. She got to the far side of the hall and plunged down into the foliage, thrashing through it and down the steps into the formal gardens. She found herself close to the promenade where the feast was taking place. The smell of frying sweetmeats meant the food tables were just round the corner. Chaya skidded to a halt in front of two boys stuffing rice cakes down their shirts. They looked up in alarm at her sudden arrival and took off in different directions. Leaping away from them, she pitched into a crowd of dancers and musicians. The revellers were oblivious to the unfolding drama and cymbals clashed and bare torso dancers jumped and twirled to the beat of the drums. She ran through the band, clapping her hands over her ears to escape the shrill sounds of swaying flutes. Stop her, came a shout. Stop her! The dancers paused one by one and some of the music petered out. People gawped, looking behind Chaya towards the guards chasing her. The girl! Stop the girl! A man in the crowd lunged at Chaya, but she slipped out of his grasp and ran towards the gates of the royal complex. Coconut flower decorations tied long strings came crashing down as she ran through them, wrapping themselves around her like a trap. She tore them off and kept running. Elephants from the temple stood on the lawn ahead of her, draped in their mirror-studded regalia, ready for the pageant later. In the middle of them stood the king's grand tusker himself, Ananda. He was wearing his special maroon and gold garments and his tusks were massive and powerful up close. Chaya ground to a stop on the grass and looked back. She was boxed in. She sprinted up and ducked under the mighty bulk of Ananda, the world instantly going dark and dank. His mayhut gave a shout and grabbed at her plait, yanking her head back, but she broke free and rolled out on the other side. She sprang up to see the maid turn and yell at the guards, thundering towards them. Some of the elephants had started to toss their heads alarmingly. Stop! The maid waved his arms at the guards. The elephants are getting disturbed. The guards slowed down and Chaya took her chance. She ran to the boundary and dashed out through the gates. She was free. Skirting the city, she headed towards the patches of wilderness on the east side of the palace, the wind flying through her hair as she sprinted away. When she got there, she stopped and leaned against a tree, catching her breath. She peered through the wilderness and smiled. She'd lost them. 
Chaya shimmied up the tree, hands scratching against the rough bark. She settled herself in one of the high branches and picked out the coconut blossoms stuck in her hair. Lifting her linen pouch over her neck, she dropped the jewels onto her lap. They sparkled in shards of bright blue, green and pink against the grey of her skirt. It had been a huge risk, her boldest robbery to date, and yet she'd pulled it off. She picked a jambu fruit from the branch nearby and crunched into its juicy pink flesh, peering through the leaves at the royal compound in the distance. It was pandemonium down there. The crowds were scattered and panicked, clusters of people moving in different directions, the king standing out in his gold-encrusted waistcoat that had come down from the dais and was roaring at his staff. The queen and her procession of ladies were being guided out of the promenade up to the palace. The maids on the green were trying desperately to calm their confused charges and stop them running amok. In the middle of it all, Ananda lifted up his majestic head and trumpeted loudly into the blue, blue sky. She got away with it. I can tell from the title of that book that Chaya is not going to stop at just stealing jewels from the queen. That was the girl who stole an elephant. Now then, staying on the elephant theme, I thought it might be fun for us to make these super cool elephant decorations. Um, you could just keep it as a decoration or you could even make it into a reed diffuser for your parents or perhaps a loved one that might like that. Um, so what you need to kick off with, believe it or not, is one of these. It's a milk bottle. It's really clever because this part is going to be the trunk and we'll put the eye of the elephant there. The tail will go there and we'll pop two legs there. Um, to make this, you are going to need some scissors, uh, a pen, paint, stuff to decorate your elephant with and that's about it. So first we're going to take our marker pen and I'll show you how to mark out your elephant shape. Look at where the handle ends of your milk bottle and about a centimetre up from there, well depending on how tall you want your elephant, if you want your elephant as tall as the whole handle section of the milk jug, you could draw a line at the edge of the handle section. If you want it a bit smaller, you can go up higher. I'm going to go up about uh, one and a half centimetres higher uh, and then just draw a line all the way around your milk jug. There we go. Now, um, it's not the straightest line but don't worry because we can cut it straight. And also if you're worried that you might cut jaggedy, you could always start lower because you can always even it up and make your elephant shorter by going higher. But you can't stick elephant back on. Next, you might get a grown up to help with this next part because we're gonna cut in to our milk carton. If you have long scissors, it makes it easier to cut straight and once you've done that, see mine's already a bit wonky so I'm going to straighten it up the minute it's off the jug. So cut your handle as low as possible because we can trim our trunk later. There we go. So already I have got my elephant shape more or less and you'll find actually that if you're using um washable marker you'll be able to scrub that line off quite easily. I should also point out before you use your milk bottle you need to make sure that you've washed it out properly because milk can get a bit stinky if it's hanging around in there still so you need to really rinse it out with soap and water with a bit of washing up liquid. There we go so my marker pen has now come off my elephant and his trunk needs to be cut a little bit lower. His or her could be a she elephant. Uh, so I'm going to snip off the trunk to the length that I want. Ooh. And there we go. That's a better trunk length. And then all you need to do is you need to cut your elephant's legs out. So I'll just show you if you just make an arched shape like that on each side, then snip out your elephant's legs by cutting around the arch shape that will work really nicely and it's amazing how quick we get 
an elephant shape. There we go. So there's one side of our elephant and I'll cut out another little arch for legs on the other side. And then it's time to get painting. So you can paint your elephant any color you want. Um, gray or light blue are obviously good elephant colors, but then you could go patchwork like Elmer the elephant, or you could have a funky red elephant or a hot pink elephant, whatever color you fancy. Um, so get your paints out and uh, get to painting. I'm using acrylic paint for this but you could use um, a water-based paint. You could even use an oil-based paint, but that's very mucky, so I wouldn't recommend it. Whatever your parents or whoever you're with recommends. Okay, so time now for me to get painting. I'm just gonna show you that I've put a bit of white and a bit of blue, and I'm gonna mix up a light blue color and then apply it. Um, so here we go. Also, I wanted to say, make sure you put down uh, something to uh, make sure your table is protected because you don't want to get your paint everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to keep going with this painting. A good way to paint is to put your hand inside and then it makes it really easy to paint all the way around. So once your elephant is painted, you're nearly ready to decorate. Um, first of all, you need to give your elephant an eye. So you could draw on an eye with mark pen. Or if you've got googly eyes, you could always stick a googly eye on. Or you could cut out uh, bits of paper or stickers to glue on. So I've shaped my elephant's eye a bit like that. And what I'm gonna do is put some eyeballs in and then I'm also going to give my elephant eyelashes like that. There we are. So my elephant has eyes already. Um, also we need our elephant to have ears. So draw a sort of ear shape uh, onto your elephant. There we go. That sort of looks like an elephant's ear, doesn't it? And then another thing you might want to do is give an elephant that one of those sort of shawls that they wear. Um, and then repeat the same thing on the other side and your shawl can have little tassels and you can paint that a separate colour as well. So I'm going to keep going round the back, but there we go. Um, keep decorating bits of your elephant. So I've coloured my elephant's shawl in red pen and completed both sides. I've started putting a rain around the middle. Now this blanket at the back can be really decorated because Asian elephants are often really dressed up. So I'm going to now do add some more touches. Sequins are really good or you could use a bit of tin foil because a bit of glitz is what they love in these processions in India with the very grand elephants. So I'm just going to uh, bling my elephant up a bit with some sequins and other bits and pieces and I'll show you the final product. So I have added my sequins on and put a bit of tin foil at the back and at the top there and then stuck on some little triangles and decorated my elephant. And the final touch is to decorate the hat. You could tie off a bit of wool and fray the ends and stick on a little tassel because they often have these little um, tassel-y hats. Uh, or another option you could do is find a cute little pom-pom and stick that on the top, um, but you'd need some very sticky glue to do that. Or I've got a bit of ribbon here, um, that sort of curly, whirly ribbon. And that's another good thing to stick on the top as a final touch for your hat. Or if you wanted to, you could make your elephant into a reed diffuser and I'll show you how it's really easy. 
So all you need to do to make it into a reed diffuser and do this with the help of a grown-up is find a jar or a container that's a suitable size to match that of your elephant and then what we're going to do is take the lid off and then you just stick it over the top. Da -da! So if you are making a reed diffuser, another really good tip is to measure up your elephant against your reed diffuser when you're cutting the elephant to size and then you know it will fit perfectly. Unfortunately, that is it for today, but I do hope you've enjoyed learning about elephants. I'll see you next time. Bye. Happy elephant making. Please subscribe and spread the word. Bye.